What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the Indie Rundown. This is Zach here, and uh, we're here on our YouTube page with a brand new show, a brand new gig. Uh, this is something I've always wanted to do for quite some time, and I'm pretty pretty damn hyped to finally be able to do it. Um, it's a new side show that's going to be exclusive to our YouTube channel, and that is called Comic Book Weekly. Uh, it's a show that I created, and I'm going to be doing on a weekly basis. Um, it's going to be a place to talk about everything comics and superhero movies, all that good shit. Uh, basically a place for nerds to hang out, chill out, have a good time, and uh, talk about the shit we love. So um, how it's going to work is I'm going to be hosting the show every week, and uh, we're gonna, just going to have like a rotating guest panel each time. So with that said, today, on our very first episode, I got a special guest to kick this whole thing off with me. He's a good friend, he's a bro, and he's a fellow superhero nerd. He's a hell of an actor, and he's been on our show before. You might remember him. Uh, it's my honor to welcome my bro, Anthony Hernandez. What's up, my man? Brother, this is an honor, man, to be your first guest. I really appreciate this. You know what? There's no better person for this job than you, man. I've told you that before. I'll get out of here, dude. And I'm going to say it again. You are the man. This ain't this. no sappy shit, bro. This is a comic show, man. Bro, you just you can't but I say, appreciate it. hey, comics and sappiness, they go, <laughs> come on, man. They go hand in hand, bro. Come on. Oh, of course, dude. Of course. You got to show a vulnerable side, man, if you're going to be a nerd, you know? That's right, man. That's right, homie. But with that vulnerable side, you got to be a fucking badass, too, you know? so You got to be a badass. How else can we identify these characters, man? They're all badasses. Exactly, dude. They're all badasses, and they're all emotional, man. So, uh, yeah, what else you been up to, man? What's, what's going on? Well, you know, Guerrero, man, that monster keeps getting bigger and bigger, and I'm so glad about that, man. And, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm really learning about it patience and doing things right and myself as an artist and and collaboration with others man so i am i'm stoked mm-hmm. about that but you know we're also uh, putting together some micro shorts that um we think need to be put out there you know as um, as artists you want to make sure that you have a, a, a finger on the pulse of society and you're able to create stories that um, can identify with um, with others out there. So, you know, we're excited about that. And, um, you know, being a yeah. full-time husband and dad, man, I'm always busy. So life's great, brother. Of course. Of course, man. Of course. But, yeah, just to, uh, just to clarify with all the nerds that might be listening, you know, we're talking about some movies and stuff that we're making. So, but, dude, we definitely got to have you on the main show again to get more into this film stuff. But, um um, that would be great. We can get you in the studio too. So for sure. Uh, but yeah. So here, what we're going to do today is we're basically going to have a running theme for each show, and this show's theme is going to be anything and everything Wolverine. We're going to be <sighs> delving all into the history of Wolverine and all that good shit because I know you're a fan of Wolverine. So uh, yeah, it's going to be a hell of a time. But before we get to that, I wanted to ask you real quick on the new Endgame tra- or TV spot that showed up during the Super Bowl, man. What do you think about that? Goosebumps, man. Chills. You know, it, it was it was interesting because I didn't I didn't expect to see it so soon um, in in during the program, but it was my kids that yelled, "Dad, look!" And I, I was yeah, I, dude. It was like right at the beginning, wasn't it? It was, it was, and they it was like right were, even before kickoff. I was I was like, "Holy shit!" It was okay. I, I think they knew the Super Bowl was going to be boring this year, so they wanted to get in the, <laughs> as many people as they could yeah. to see the trailer. Yeah. But you know, I mean. A story like that is going to require diligent work, diligent storytelling. Oh, man. And yeah. you and I talked yeah. about this earlier, about it being closer to three hours long, I think. And it's, Yeah, they it's said like the, the current runtime is, is, the current runtime is, I think, at three hours. Three hours. And I still you know? don't think that's enough. I still don't. There's I don't either, so honestly. Much. I mean, if yeah. indeed they, they're bringing an ending to the lives of some of these major characters, that's going to mm-hmm. be really difficult to bring in, you know, Very. doing this and also finding a solution to everything. And, um, you know, uh, but then again, I have not been disappointed. I, I've been disappointed by very few Marvel films, but, um, hey, it's been a while, you know, it's been too damn long since uh, since part one. So I'm I'm ready. I'm stoked, mm-hmm. man. I'm very curious, too. Yeah, I remember the anticipation level going into Infinity War. It was kind of like nothing we've never seen before. So this is literally like 10 times bigger. You know, I didn't think it could be possible, but I think, you know, Infinity War is one of the biggest films of all time. I think this is going to top that, you know, without question. Um, and they're saying like they have a rough cut. They're, they're uh, 
because that article I read, it was like, you know, the directors were saying there's a rough cut, and it's at it's still at, because originally, a few months ago, they said it was at, like, around three hours, but it wow. might come down a bit. But the fact that, but the fact that months later, it's still at three hours, they haven't, it's like, they're basically saying we don't really have anything that we can cut, you know, so uh, I, I like it, though. I don't want them to cut shit out. No. Um G- give me four hours. Five. I don't care, dude. My ass is going to sit there, and I'm going to enjoy every minute of it. So yeah. I really liked hearing that, the three hours. That's like Lord of the Rings shit right there. It is, you know, and it, it deserves it. I mean, there's so many characters going to be character yeah. introductions yeah. and character endings, you know. And, I mean, for some of us old purists out there that, that, that had the, the, the Infinity War, Infinity Gauntlet um, uh, books, you know, it, it, there's so much. It's such a deep, deep, deep ocean of, of, of character and story building that I, I'm really excited to see the surprises. I know there's going to be some yeah. surprises. Yeah, there. oh yeah. And I know that I believe the ending of, of filming happened before the merger was finalized. So I doubt we're going to see any of the X-Men or um, Fantastic yeah, I think Four so. in there. I think so. Even though a lot of them were pivotal characters, pivotal characters in the original story. But nonetheless, you know, if... I'm just I'm excited to see what they do. You know, I know Kevin Feige. He's he's a fan too, and he understands that. And uh, he's finally begun the conversation on X Men and uh, the search for the new Wolverine. So, needless to say, him. Well, mm-hmm. no, I was going to say it's funny that you brought that up because on my topic list over here, uh, that was going to be one of the topics I wanted to talk about. So, you know, since you brought it up, let's go ahead and move on, man. I wanted to ask you um, future expectations, man. We all know the X Men are going to show up in the in the MCU at some point. Uh, right. Could be a year, could be a couple years. It, it'll get here eventually. But what do you, what do you think the MCU should do with the character, and um, who do you think would be good for the role? What are your expectations? What should they do differently than Fox? Oh wow! This time, uh, even though Hugh Jackman was pretty damn good as him, he was you know? pretty damn good for the cinematic. Uh, story for the cinematic storylines but mm-hmm. you know going back to who Wolverine was Wolverine you've got to understand Wolverine was introduced in the 70s so he he was the anti-hero he was the guy that was along the same uh, parallel st- um, I guess uh, society um, of, of let's say the Rambos of the world and and the a lot of these guys that were Vietnam vets that came back and they were lost but they were ultra masculine and it was a different society they were loners they were conflicted characters they were no longer in the world that they had left Wolverine <coughs> is an emissary from that see Wolverine mm-hmm. is 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 a character that that really stretches the the spectrum of of, of of human emotion he's the loner that looks to belong he has no idea where he came from but he knows what what he is in a sense of um, what he's able to do you know he's always been on a search but he's at home wherever he's at and so I, I don't know off the top of my head and I really don't know too many of these younger actors out there or these bubblegum actors but it's gonna take right, somebody right. You know, what they've done with Iron Man, what they did with Captain America, and what they did with these other characters, they need mm-hmm. Wolverine is the apotheosis of, of of Marvel. He is that one character that embodies everything and everybody. Wolverine is also what, I mean, by some um, uh, estimates, he's 140 years old at this point. He was born in the 1880s in the origin yeah. book, but then he was born in 1845, I believe, in the um, in the um, um, X Men Origins story on a uh, uh, movie, and so he's an old right. character. He's been through it all. He knows it all. So what's it going to take? I can tell you this much: when he was introduced in the 80s and in the 90s, when he was at his pinnacle, when he reached the top, right there, guys like myself would have these conversations all the time sleepovers or in the cafeteria or wherever we were at let's get we need somebody Mm -hmm. that 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 was built like a jean-claude van damme built like him short stocky that's what wolverine was he was built like a tank he's five foot three um which Hugh jackman's i think is six foot three but we needed somebody with the the presence (laughs) and the um the the crankiness of a uh, of a Clint Eastwood, you know, but at the same time he needed mm-hmm. he needed somebody with the strength and the presence of let's say a Mike Tyson, you know. So this is what Wolverine brought on on the pages of the comic books, you know. This is what was going on 
when the character that we know of now as Wolverine was being created, his storyline was being created um, before it plateaued into the films, um, in which the films tried tried to do. And I understand, you know, the film business and so forth. But I really, really right, hope right. I really hope they did this. You know, they did it with with Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. Oh, that was a phenomenal casting there. He really, oh, yeah. you know, he embodied that character. He embodied Tony Stark. And so that's what that's what yeah, I, I said. I said in my ranking. I said in my rankings video that you know when I started talking about the first Iron Man, I said I, I don't really care who you are or, or what you think, but I don't think anybody will ever top Robert Downey as Iron Man. No, you know, no. never. No, you, you can't. You it, can't. It's it, it's one of those things where I think about Hugh Jackman. It's like, yes, we know they're going to recast all the X Men, and it's like, can anyone ever live up to Hugh Jackman's role? But then at the same time, it doesn't have to because it's a whole new take on the character. But still, it's like. You're always going to want to, I guess, you know, immediately compare him to Hugh Jackman for some reason. I feel like I am at least. Right. You know, and, and there's, you know, there's, um, I, I understand that. And and um, I, I'll admit when Hugh Jackman was first cast as Wolverine, I was a little disappointed. But as mm-hmm. he evolved, you know, I, I think he did a good job. He kept it entertaining. He understood the character. But at the same time, at the end of the day... We're still looking for that one guy that embodied the complexities and the depth that Wolverine brought uh, to the stories, yeah. you know, yeah. that we grew up yeah. with. Yeah, Dude, I got I got all the faith in Feige that they're going to find the right person. I really do. He's going to do um, it. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of funny because there was a rumor going around last year in the summer when A Quiet Place came out. They were saying, uh, I guess a reporter had asked John Krasinski oh. about. Um, yeah, you and Emily Blunt would be really good as Reed Richards and Susan Storm, and the whole, like, all the fans just erupted, and he was like, yeah, that'd be fun to do, and we're like, that is perfect fucking casting for those two. So it's oh, like, yeah. uh, Feige, I hope you're listening, because you need to go after them, too, for the for Reed and Sue. That'd be, that'd be great. But, um, yeah, I got, I got no, uh, I got a lot of faith in Feige, you know. Um, I think they're going to spend a lot of time with it, and not just Wolverine, all the X-Men, because that's a lot of people to cast. But what I do hope is... If you notice all the X-Men movies from Fox, they were kind of all like Wolverine-centric, like Wolverine and the X-Men. It's like, I kind of want the MCU to focus on the X-Men as a whole, you know, not just one standout. I get it, some stars might be bigger than others, actor-wise, but still, you know, that's one thing about Fox is I wish they would have done is highlighted their other characters a little more than just sure. Wolverine all the fucking time. Even though it wasn't, you know, bad. I, I love Wolverine and Hugh Jackman, but still, you know, I think that's something... Feige's gonna do because I mean shit Wolverine might even, might not even be there in the beginning we don't know they could come out with the original X-Men lineup how badass would that be oh, but still man. yeah you know, the uh, uncanny X-Men oh yeah man. dude wow yeah man so you know it's, it's gonna be interesting to see their take on them I, I really you know I, I think a character that they didn't do too much justice on was Angel and his, his oh yeah oh dude he got destroyed in both movies he was in I think Ben Hated Foster it. played him in part one and he, he did not play him the way that he needed to be played that guy went through some hell, you know, and he yeah, he, he was just kind of he was just kind of there. He was just the there. End. Yeah, he wasn't there, and they definitely didn't give him uh, the the, no. the the story that he needed or the time that he needed. And I get it, like you said, there's yeah. so many characters, you know. I mean, they're going to be making these things. I mean, in order to do them justice, they're going to be making them until well after we're gone, you know. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. But but with Wolverine. You know, he's got so much gravitas, man. You can't help that but but gravitate towards him. He's that one character that everybody wants to know, you know, because he's so mm-hmm. complex, you know. He doesn't even know about himself. He knows nothing about his history. He knows nothing about his, his origins himself. And so when you play a character, when you create a character like that, it, it, it pulls everybody in. And right. either th- he's going to have to have a standalone series his, uh, himself, or I, I'm not too sure. But I guess it all depends again on the actor that they get to to take on that role, you know. And and Kevin Feige is a fan, you know. He's he's a he grew up being a comic book nerd like us, and so he understands the responsibility that um, yeah he's got yeah. Well, see, I know I remember two names last year that were rumored was Scott Eastwood and oh, yeah. Tom Hardy, which. I really wouldn't want to see Tom Hardy. I think he's he's yeah. done enough. Um, Scott Eastwood is an interesting choice, but I don't know too much about him. I guess that's good because I don't really know like his char- characteristics and you know everything he's done. Um, by the way, your dog is taking a mean nap right now. 
Can you? Funny. Can you hear him? <laughs> I can hear him in my headphones. Oh but. man, I'm so sorry. No, you're good, man. You're good. You know, hey, there's there's no pressure here, dude. If your dog wants to come on and snore on the show, fuck it, dude. We'll just have like a five minute intermission of him just snoring. But um, yeah, so that's you know that's uh, a couple of the names they were throwing around, and uh, I can't remember the other. It was um. I remember I heard a wild theory too, like Jason Momoa, and I'm like, dude, you guys are idiots, man. Get out of here. No, they can't do uh, that. No. But but yeah, man, I, I got faith, dude. I got faith they're gonna find the right one. So uh, I, I did I did you know. I did read something on Reddit the other day that um Keanu Reeves Shit, had Reddit, interest, man. He had interest in doing Wolverine being Wolverine, playing Wolverine now. <laughs> Who'd you say, Keanu? Keanu, man. But I, I can't. Oh shit! I can't see. He doesn't have that no, animalistic no. quality that Wolverine needs. You know, it's like asking Tom Cruise to play Wolverine. Like, come on, dude. No, <laughs> yeah, know. ain't gonna happen, man. Ain't gonna happen. It's not. Now, if you, ain't gonna happen. If you get Jason Momoa to be five foot three, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, and cut his hair and get rid of the Samoa tattoos. Then yeah, maybe you got you might got a choice. You might got a shot, but. Let's move on to the movies, man. Um, I want to get your thoughts on it. We're not going to talk about all the X-Men movies because there's like 50 of them and it's it's going to take way too long. But sure. Let's talk about the three Wolverine movies. Um, let me. I know you're going to go a little more in depth than me, but let me give my thoughts real quick. I hated... It's really simple. I loved Logan. The Wolverine was okay. I hated Origins. Oh, Origins. I think that's, no. I think that's pretty the same with everybody. You know, it's... If you ask everybody to rank these movies, I'm pretty sure they're all going to be the same ranking. You know, so uh, yeah, X Men Origins, man, fucking hated that movie. Dude, hated every part. I hated every part of it. You know, I, I think that they jumped a, they jumped the gun there. They were too ambitious. They tried to squeeze in so very much. They tried to squeeze yeah. in the the origin story from uh, two thousand one, the one we talked about, um, mm -hmm. and they they couldn't do it. So they went ahead and they. In in the in the roles or the character roles of um, of of, of uh, Wolverine's um, half brother, they put in uh, Sabretooth and they made that Victor Creed yep. instead of uh, Dog Logan and his his uh, real father Thomas Logan and 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 so there was too much. And then to go from that into his um, in, into how he evolved into Weapon X and and um, and the program that uh, that Stryker uh, pulled him into, and then Team X and so forth. You know that that was way too much. I think that th right. they could have yeah. probably cut that movie in half, and it would have stood as two individual films. That was way too much, man. And you know, it, it's yeah. uh, they they diluted the story. They really did, man. And man, I waited to see that for. 20 something years and and it just didn't do it any justice so that was hurtful you know um the wolverine you know took place in japan um that was good you know a lot of his story took place in japan his samurai training you know he always considered considered himself a failed uh samurai a samurai a samurai that's that that, that failed so they did touch up on that that it's an important part of who he is you know um he does live by a code of honor but at the end, right. just kind of fell short of my expectations. Once again, I'm holding this guy. This is my favorite character um, of all time. So my expectations are pretty high, yeah. you know. And um, but they did, you know, they did add the uh, the complexities um, and the the um, the influence that the Japanese culture had on on Wolverine um, as a, as a person, as a person himself, you know, and his discipline as a as a warrior. Um, that was that was great, but Logan. Oh man. Yeah. Oh man. That's that's. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, Wolverine. <laughs> look, man. The character of Wolverine. He is. He's written as a. He's an. He's a cowboy. You you think the good, the bad, the ugly. He's that loner. He's always searching. Wolverine. You could put him. You could put him in. Um, in in the wild west right now you know in some timeline and he would fit perfectly you know mm -hmm. don't know where he came from doesn't know where he's going but wherever he's at is 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 where he's going to live is where he's going to conduct his business you know uh, however ugly it is and um now you see the the waning years of a guy a guy who's his own body is failing on him and 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 his internal scars are catching up to him and you see a vulnerability that's always been there he's always been a vulnerable character but now you see that vulnerability taking precedent you know whether in his affections yeah. towards professor x or towards uh yeah. um, x23 his daughter essentially um wow man i mean 
if that's the last Wolverine film they they ever made, I mean, I, I would be, you know, I, okay, they gave him a good ending, you know, they honored his memory, but wow. Yeah, and they they even alluded to it in, in the Wolverine when when Yukio is telling them like, I see you dying, you, you know, you put blood, you, you you're holding your heart in your hand, and yeah, my God, dude, in in the new film when when his daughter's sitting there crying, you know, uh. I mean, it's just it's just a perfect way to wrap him up, man. Um, he finally perfect had way to the, wrap him up, dude. He finally had the family he was looking for. Yeah, after know? all those years, man, all those women that were taken away from him, yeah, and all the uh, the horror that have that has come to him over the years, man. I was glad to see him get that in his last moments of life. Um, yes, even though <laughs> even though he went out pretty pretty damn brutally, man. Uh, <laughs> he did. My man X twenty four over here, just the way he launches him into that branch, just yeah. But no, I, I really I'm really glad they decided to go R rating on this. I felt I felt Hugh Jackman was really able to give it everything he's always wanted to give like he, I, I feel like he's always been held back but i feel in this film he just he fucking let loose and he took he took advantage of everything um i i love the opening when he's trying to sleep and those thugs are trying to take off his tire and he comes out and just starts just bodying all of them man stabbing them in the face and, and under the chin and the side of the head it's just that that's the Wolverine I always wanted to see in the movies. It's you know, he was great. He's 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 tired of he's tired of all the shit anymore. I mean, he he's now the grumpy old. He's the old curmudgeon now, you know. And, and yeah. he's aging, man. You know, he, he's a tired old dog. He doesn't want to deal with that crap anymore. And he wants to end every threat as as fast as possible and get back to his nap. Um, yeah. So, I yeah. Mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, let dying. Yeah. Uh, let old dying, uh, old lying dogs lie. So um, that that yeah. that that fits him perfectly. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, dude. Mm-hmm. Going back to the MCU, uh, the MCU speculations. Sh- here's a good question: Do you think it would be better to introduce the X Men with Wolverine already with them, or kind of do what they did with the Fox movies? And have him meet with them later and become a part of the team. But see, that goes back to what I said earlier: is when the reason they did it that way is because I guess they were trying to make Wolverine the central character. But uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how they bring all the X Men into the MCU. Like, are they gonna do it one by one or as a team? Or you know, I really think that. I, I, and also, I'm really kind of wondering how they're gonna be able to bring the fact that mutants are in the MCU. You know, I, I think Endgame's gonna have something to do with that. I guess they're gonna reset the timeline or they're gonna find a way to have alternate realities now where mutants have now been a part of the i don't know man it's see it's all just a mind fuck right now when you start trying to think about end game and and what can come after it really makes my brain hurt a little bit <laughs> you know dude there's just so many like there's just so much shit you know that it's it's a mind fuck right now in feige we trust man I, I trust. And I totally them. lost my original question because okay. the the end game just takes over your brain, bro, and you just it does. You just yeah, it's crazy. It really. Oh, it, it was really my does. my original question. Yeah, like yeah, should they come as a team or introduce them one by one? What, what do you think? You know, I I I think if you can introduce if they introduce them as a team, let's introduce them as as um, as a young team. Give them time to grow. You know, just like they did yeah. with the Avengers. You know, give them kind of like what they've been doing with these new movies. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, you're talking okay, not that young, but like like younger, younger, younger. Yeah, younger, younger. You you still want them to you want to see the chemistry develop between them. If you throw them in, right. you know, because then you're not going to have any pliability with the characters later on. If you go ahead and set them up and say, okay, this has been them. This is how they've always operated. With the viewer, doesn't get to enjoy the storyline. Doesn't get to enjoy the character development. Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. And so, what, what you yeah. really want? You want that pliability. You want to be flexible with the characters. I mean, in a, in a, a character as big as Wolverine and with as much weight as he bears, you want to introduce him a little bit later. If not, he's going to take away the film from every other character out there. Um, and and you know, yeah, if you ask me, my mm-hmm. oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and Kevin Feige has done a great job with making sure that that happens in the uh, in the MCU universe so far uh, with the Avengers. Right. With the if Avengers. you ask. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you ask me my opinion, dude, I would say find a way to introduce Professor X first and let the universe grow around him. Like, he could probably start recruiting everybody, coming across them, you know, and have the relationship grow that way. You know, build up the school, or if they do the X-Mansion, or, you know, build up the school, build up the team, you know, and then have Wolverine come in the picture later, and then everybody else, you know, like Cyclops. But, you know, 
Storm uh, Gene and fuck it, dude. Angel Beast. I mean, I'm telling you, dude. I, get the originals in there, man. You know, it's they need to. They, they, the world is their oyster right now. So um, you know, and I, I actually, and I bet it's. I was I was going to say, and each character is so complex too. I mean, you know, I, I, oh yeah. I, one thing I wanted to see was the was the the relationship uh, between Alex Summers and um, or and, um, and and Scott Summers, you know. So you've got um, Cyclops and you've got yeah. Havoc, you know. And they never really built on that. They're, I mean, the, the fact that they were brothers, you know, and there was a lot of complexity there too, as well. Yeah, they um, did. They did that all ass backwards because Alex was younger in the comics, but now he's older in Apocalypse. But you know, it, it still worked. There was a cool. There was a few good scenes. You know, where he's, you see him really caring for Scott, and then he takes him to the X-Mansion and stuff like that. And then they just do the stupidest thing and kill him off, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. That's Fox for you. That's Fox. Yeah, it's all good, though, man. Yeah, it's all going to change. For you. Yeah, thank God, dude. Thank <laughs> God. Al- along with, uh, now here's a question. Um, I actually did hear, uh, I think I was reading an article today, or I saw it on my, saw it on my Facebook feed, but um, something about, I think the, the Marvel said that they're going to keep doing r-rated films so it makes me wonder like if, yes you know deadpool's you know deadpool's coming over and i do think they, they have to keep ryan reynolds man oh yeah they have to bring him over no doubt no doubt I, you know so I, I i do think they should bring him over and keep making the r-rated movies and make him a part of the mcu you know so that's right i, I can't uh yeah it was disney yeah i disney can't imagine that. that's that. right disney it was disney yeah. that said um we're still going to continue to 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 make the create the uh the r-rated films now Go you in, have to, man. You have to go into Deadpool. I mean, you've got a story. You've got oh lord. I mean, Deadpool and Wolverine. I mean, oh yeah. If you can get me a Deadpool, Wolverine, and Spider Man crossover film, dude, dude, could you could you <laughs> imagine? Could you imagine? And I, I'm going to lose my shit if this ever happens, which it has potential to happen. Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool, and Tom Holland, Spider Man. Like I, I can't even fathom how fucking cool that would be. Oh, that that you know, that. Which, oh man. Dude, that's straight from the comics, bro. Um, it was already badass seeing Spider-Man and Doctor Strange on screen for the first time ever last year. So, you know, it's just uh, the thought of Deadpool and Spider-Man and, like you said, Wolverine, too, and uh, everybody else just coming together. It's just, it's just, it's uncharted territory, man. I don't know how to react and I don't know how to contain my excitement. You know, it's it's crazy. It is, you know, re- reading those crossovers, you know, as a kid, and, and just just reading the banter back and forth, and how quick witted these guys were, you know, God, I just I, I I live for the day that I can see that again or experience that again. I think it'll be here. I think it'll be here in due time. Um, I think Feige knows what he's doing. I think he has a handful of people underneath him that know what they're doing, and I think they know what the fans want. And it's not even really what the fans want, you know. I mean, it kind of is, but you also want to make sure the stories well thought out and well crafted and that's something the MCU has always done a good job at doing you know there's some MCU films I, I don't like there's some that I hate oh yeah you know that I talked about in my rankings but even those movies if you really think about it they're they're origin films in, in a way and you know they, they're they're just another part of telling the story that helps build up to these big ass movies like this so you know there's going to be a few hits and misses you know but uh I think Feige knows when it comes to the X-Men and Deadpool and the Fantastic Four, I think he knows what not to do, you know, after all these other failed movies. You know, the X-Men... So, I trust him. I trust him. You know, to some to some folks and some fans, the X-Men are the crown jewel of the Marvel Universe, you know. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, the X-Men is what really what, what pulls Marvel into its own stratosphere away from the DC um, the DC characters because you've got these mutants now, these people that were born genetically different. And mm-hmm. so that really resonated with a lot of people that were reading these things, you know. And uh, the introduction of the X-Men in the 1960s was in the middle of the civil rights era where people were were, were, were fighting for inclusion and their differences were trying to be, uh, um, um, you know, consolidated or reconciled. And so the, the fact that that, that the X Men now are going to be in in the um, I guess in, in the hands of somebody like a Kevin Feige. I mean Feige. God, sometimes I don't know how to pronounce his name. Sometimes Feige. Um, yeah, it's, it's Feige. Feige. Um, <laughs> I've heard people call him Feige, Kevin Feige, or Fig, or Feige. Like, come on, guys. The Feige. <laughs> yeah, Kevin Feige. 
Yeah. But, you know, he knows what he's Man. dealing with, you know. And in these characters, yeah. there's so much more than what, you know, you see aesthetically on the outside. There's, they represent so very, very much. That's what Wolverine was. Right. Like I said, Wolverine, the Wolverine character is so complex because he was written at a time where you had this population, this marginal population of men who were trying to understand what masculinity was. You know, they, mm-hmm. they were... They were towing both sides of the spectrum in society the outsider but i'm trying to i'm trying to do whatever you know i'm trying to mold uh, in or blend into society i don't know you know the world i came from is not the world i'm in now um right and 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 so you know you 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 have that responsibility when you're telling a story and you put it on screen you have that responsibility you know that's what that's why stan lee was so I mean, he, people love the man so much because he wrote characters that we as people could identify with. And that yeah. is what every, yeah. and really, I mean, honestly, man, that's what really every comic book character is. It's, um, yeah. you know, it's you're, you're giving a voice to people out there, especially kids, and, um, and saying, look, you know, you can do extraordinary things too. It doesn't matter how different you are. And so with Wolverine, you know, a guy as complex as that. It's. I, I really hope that they do him justice, and I hope that whoever they choose to portray him on film understands that. And um, I think if they can do that, we're going to see a Wolverine that I think a lot of people are going to really be blown away by. Yeah, I agree, man. And and there's been a lot of people saying, "We'll just get Hugh Jackman to do it again," and it's like, no. That's not going to happen, dude. He's done with it. You know, he's getting up there in age, which really isn't that big of a deal. But, you know, you really want to take the chance to capture a younger Wolverine. You know, get an actor that's in his prime that can, you know, Hugh Jackman's like 50-something, man. He can't keep bulking up like this year after year, you know. Um, Get someone younger, really take time with his backstory and where he's at and uh, do it that way, you know. And that's one of the things I really loved about Feige is what he did with Spider-Man. He got a young kid who looks like a true high school kid and has the attitude, personality, and traits of a high school kid. You know, it's not Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield pretending to be a high school kid when they look nothing like a high school kid. <laughs> you know, he really, yeah, he really took his time to find the right Spider-Man to to have that, the, the appearance, you know, straight from the comics. So, I saw that, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, man, um... That's that's what gives me faith. If they could find the right Spider Man, dude, they'll find the right Wolverine. Yeah, you know, I believe it. I believe it, man. Yeah. And I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited because I think I think they can I think he's the search has already started, or I think he already got the green light to go ahead and start developing um X Men and Wolverine. Yeah. See, I don't know when the merger's officially going through. I think it's sometime this year or this spring or something. Um but once he does, because people like people have said Silver Surfer might show up in Endgame. Wolverine might show up in Endgame. I don't. I don't think so, dude. If if they found somebody already, we would know. You know, it's not going to be a surprise cameo. I highly doubt it, dude. I highly doubt they could keep a uh, keep a secret like that. I don't know, you man. Know? Um, I mean, I, I you know, I I don't know. They've done a really good job so far. They've done a good job of, of, of certain elements, keeping them secret, keeping um, everything under tabs. They've done a really good job. Uh, now, I, I know you, like everybody else, has heard the rumor of Hugh Jackman um, spilling the beans that there has been conversations of Wolverine, of him playing Wolverine again, mm-hmm. possibly last scene cameo in Endgame. I don't think he should, I honestly, think, like no, I said. Yeah, because then you commit him to that. And then, and then you know, I, I yeah. And then, and, and then in what, five years, he's almost pushing 60, or 10 years, he's almost pushing 60, and we're not going to have that much time with him. No. You, know, you want to get someone in their 20s or 30s to play Wolverine. You know, That way he can have a hell of a run, like I'm sure Tom Holland's going to do with Spider-Man. He's, hopefully he's going to be around for a long time. So, um, Which is cool, because we will get to see Peter Parker grow up basically on on screen, mm-hmm. you know. So I love that they're doing that. But yeah, man, I just I think it's a little far fetched uh, to think that Silver Surfer, or Wolverine, or anybody like that will will actually show up in Endgame. Um, although if they do, people are gonna lose their fucking collective minds. Um, it's I I can't imagine I can't imagine the repercussions from that. So <laughs> so yeah, man, it's 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 almost here, dude. Two months away. Two and a half months away. Um, I know. It's crazy. 
It's crazy. I this think. anticipation has just been insane. But <laughs> well, cool, man. Well, hey, let, let's let's move on to uh, let's move on to a segment that we're gonna do here on okay. the show every week. Yes. Um, this is a segment, you know, a little a quick little you know five ten minute segment. We're not we're not gonna get too crazy with it. It's called, we're gonna call it comic book throwback. Yeah. Buddy. Now what we're gonna do each week is yeah we're gonna take a we're gonna we're gonna take a specific storyline or comic from back in the day and we're just gonna talk about it. We're gonna give our thoughts and you know uh, you know what we thought about it and uh, what what we love about it and that's pretty much all the same stuff. I'm just repeating myself. But anyways, <laughs> um, today we're going to. Uh, Today we're going to be talking about one that I actually was not familiar with until you pointed it out to me, and that is Origin, also known as uh, Wolverine Origin. Um, it's a six-issue comic book limited series published by Marvel from November 2001 to March 2002, written by Bill Jemis, Joe Quesada, Quesada. Mm -hmm. and, Paul Jink yeah, and Paul Jenkins, and illustrated by Andy Kubert and Richard Is Isanove. Man, these guys have terrible last names. Uh, but basically, or or Origin tells the story of the superhero Wolverine, best known as a member of the X-Men. Since the character first appeared in the early 1970s, his history had often been shrouded in mystery, with bits of information revealed piecemeal over time, most notably in Weapon X. But this series was the first to reveal Wolverine's early days and his original background. Now, you pointed this out to me. What do you... Tell me about this. Tell me about this, uh, this storyline. Okay. Well, I think one of the reasons why it was overshadowed, and there's a lot of uh, fans out there that didn't really pick up on it, is because it did come out two months after uh, the uh, September. And I, I, was yeah. um, I was one of them. Yeah. I was one of them. Now, uh, when it came out, th there were rumors of it coming out maybe for a few years leading up to it before they went ahead and, mm -hmm. and, and they, you know, they went ahead and, and put uh, ink to paper. So you've got to understand, uh, building up to it, in order to understand the, the, um, the splash that this comic made or this book made, the series made, was that nobody knew anything about Wolverine. All we knew was right. he was this tank of a mutant, this hairy guy that was confused. He was a loner. He was an X-Men. He was uh, a guy that could be tender-hearted and, and nurturing towards, let's say, a Kitty Pride or a um, a rogue one minute, and he could go into a berserker mode and... Um, you know, tear up an entire army of bad guys in the next minute. And so <laughs> you want to know what kind of person is that? And so when this dropped, all of a sudden we're given into an insight into a history of a character who doesn't even know their own history. So it was very interesting mm -hmm. to say, to know this because he, he didn't know his own history. So mm -hmm. we got to finally figure out or see on paper how old he was. Wolverine in the comic in this story origin story was born in eighteen in the eighteen eighties in Canada British British Columbia I believe now he was he was born to a wealthy family um, of landowners his father uh, James Howlett and his mother Elizabeth Howlett well to do people um, the guy was a well to do guy but he was a sickly individual sickly kid allergies he was frail um, you know he. Um, he was a kid that didn't have a lot of friends, and it seems to me like he was, um, he was, um, I don't know, he was maybe in a bubble, a bit of a bubble. They kind mm -hmm. of kept him, they protected him from the world. As you find right. out, they were protecting the world from him. Um, yeah. But now what we find out in there is that he's actually the illegitimate son of the, the, uh, the family's caretaker, uh, Thomas uh, Thomas Logan, uh, we, everybody's heard the name Logan associated with Wolverine, um, and he has a half brother, Dog Logan. Um, what happens is, um, you know, as as all these tragic stories uh, start, is uh, this character uh, unfortunately sees his family uh, killed. Um, his his real his biological father gets into it with his uh, with his um, I guess his what he perceived to be his father. Um, he kills him. Um, his biological father kills his father. And then um, in, a, in a fit of rage, right, right. he, this young kid, James Howlett, who's, you know, has been protected from the world, releases these bone claws, these, these uh, 
these things just just grow out of his out of his arm, out of his wrist, and he he kills his biological uh, father. Now, an interesting thing is that his mother. We knew that he had a brother before that. We knew he had a brother before that. His mother makes a comment as to, "Oh no, not you." Um, I believe there's a panel mm. in there where one of the characters, an adopted uh, uh, girl by the name of Rose, um, if I get her, if I remember her name right, um, she she witnesses claw marks on the mother, uh, three claw marks, and so now you have this idea that okay, this is either a genetic mutation that the family's experiencing. Is it a curse? I don't know. But you see Wolverine mm-hmm. go from this frail individual, or James Howlett go from this uh, frail individual to discovering this curse that he had. And um, anyways, he leaves, never to come back again. Um, now one, of, one of the downsides of his, of his mutant healing ability is that he's able to, he's able to erase memories. You know, he's able to uh, generate new brain cells right, and erase right. memories. So his neuro pathways are are they're they're regenerative. He's able to erase trauma, which is, his body would interpret as a as an injury, and and his neuro pathways can regenerate and create either new memories or or just keep those. Uh, just completely erase those. Uh, they see those as kind of an invasion into his cerebral um, area and just eliminate that. Right. Now, and that's getting a little scientific, I know. I'm telling you, man. I, you know, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You yeah know, it sounds we, like you could talk about this for hours. Bro, well, love let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Um, they adapted pretty much most of that into the beginning of the Origins movie that a lot of people probably don't know that this was basically from that comic. Right. Well, um, which myself, like I said, I wasn't familiar with Origin, uh, the comic or the graphic novel, but um, yeah, it seems like they kind of butchered it in the in the Origins movie because I don't think in the comics, in, or at least in the Origin comic, Sabretooth was his brother. It seems like they just did that for the movie. They did that Am for I right? the, yeah, they sure did. They sure did because okay. uh, yeah, okay. Victor Creed and it's it's interesting because there's there's some people to this day that say, Hey, well Sabretooth is his half brother or da 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 and it's not. It's mm-hmm. it's, it's Hollywood had to create you know, they had right. too many right. ideas, needed to go ahead and find a way to consolidate all of them. But then real story, um, his half brother's name is Dog, Dog Logan. Um yeah. and he adapts that name Logan while he's on the run. Um, and so he, you know, he, it's, um, the Hollywood X-Men origins Wolverine film. It did borrow from there. I really, I really, I really feel my opinion that they failed, I think, to tell yeah. the story as it should have been. They didn't do it justice because it would have been a different Wolverine. Yeah. You would have seen a completely different Wolverine. Um, now you're having to... I mean, know, this could have been a whole movie of itself. This whole graphic novel could have been basically an entire movie. I'm telling you. It would have been great because it, yeah. it's a heartbreaking movie, especially towards the end when, you know, he actually... Spoiler alert. He accidentally... Uh, we talk about spoilers real quick spoiler for people alert, who haven't read the novel. Um, <laughs> I'll put a little spoiler on the screen, but... No, when he accidentally kills Rose, because um, I read up on this comic last night after you told me about it, it seems it seems very heartbreaking, and it goes with that trend of, you know, fuck, man, Logan just loses woman after woman after woman, you know, and uh, I don't know if he kills Dog, or uh, I don't remember, but all, all I know is it was, it, it, it was pretty hurtful, or it was pretty sad when I read that he accidentally kills Rose. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, and it, it's, once yeah. again, it's a trend. All these women in his life he loses tragically his mother yeah his mother killed herself after after she saw that's that, right you know that's right beginning. she ends up killing that's herself right. you know and so he yeah. he he goes through this i mean the poor guy the guy is 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 the guy that's essentially living forever and so he's got to go through this he goes through these um these loops in life where he he gains a love he loses the love and gains a love and loses the love and he's not given the gift of 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 mortality like us he doesn't have impermanence the guy continues to go and live and experience the same thing over and over again and we see where this began we see the why it began Mm-hmm. And and you know they say that if you don't um, if you don't uh, study history you tend to repeat it, 
And so that's what's happening. He doesn't know his history. He doesn't know where he's from. And so you see this repeating behavior over and over. He tends to destroy what he loves or what he loves tends to get destroyed, pulls into his, his right. orbit of danger, you know, and, and he's got a very volatile life, very volatile existence. He's always being hunted, you know, he's, yeah. he's um, the, yeah. you know, the, he's the wolf that is being hunted itself for its for its abilities or for its um you think of its uh, for its own pelt i mean wolverine is a guy and it shows there he's being hunt he's always being hunted for his abilities um whether he's being used as a prize fighter or whatever but he's a guy that's being used his work in the quarry you know, he found work in a quarry there um in some obscure area and they're using him to uh to 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 excavate more uh there and so yeah, yeah. you know until he finally yeah. he finally loses it you know he loses it on uh, one of the guys that was picking on him for years but um yeah. you know it's it's always i found it so interesting that now you understand why he is the way he is and you start to feel bad for this character he's now he's a very tragic character right. because he doesn't understand yeah, very very tragic doesn't understand the, the uh the same mistakes and the, the behavioral patterns that he is just creating for himself over and over and over again which finally we right. see in, in um in logan the film come to an end and you know he's given yeah. the ending that he deserves but um but yeah man um i suggest to everybody anybody that's a wolverine fan uh or even an x-men yeah. fan read it they they really most definitely to, you can yeah yeah I mean and you can find this anywhere there's a lot of sites that have comics now if you download the Marvel app which I actually have you could buy it on there you could buy it as a whole book or uh, six issues but um, yeah I, I agree man I'm glad you pointed me towards this um, and uh, because you know I, I pride myself on being a comic book fan but of course there's there's comics out there that I'm not familiar with so it's always nice to you know especially knowing how much I know. It seems like a rare occasion to discover new material, but there's there's just so much from comics that you can always find something new. So I'm glad you pointed this out to me, man, because yeah. it really, like you said, it helps understand, you know, uh, how Wolverine becomes who he becomes, and you know, like you said, it's 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 heartbreaking, but at the same time, it's it's a much needed backstory. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely recommend it. I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna get it. You know, I want to read it in depth. I want to see the pictures and stuff like that, but. Um, yeah, good stuff, man. The artwork stuff. is the artwork is amazing, is incredible. Yeah. yeah, I saw a few. I saw a few frames, uh, a few panels, and um, there's one that's really big. It's, it's, it's. Uh, I don't know who he's standing over. I think it's his, it's his father, but he's standing over. I think when the claws first come out. Now wait, hold on. Let me ask you this: mm -hmm. in the movie Origins, he's like, he's young, dude. He's like what seven or eight? Yeah, he's not that young in the in the novel, is he? He's no, a little bit older, right? He's a little bit older. I, I think he's a preteen. So we're looking 11, 12 years old, maybe. Yeah, because they really aged him down for the movie. But I yeah, guess they, they did it because the, the the stupid Victor Creed thing. Like, he was supposed to be the older, I'll protect you, Jimmy. Don't worry. It's like, come on, dude. This is, you know, you're making him sound like a little sissy, dude. Um, <laughs> Wolverine is his own fucking man, bro. He doesn't need you there, you know, helping him out. I didn't like that about that movie. You know, no. it's like, dude, he's supposed to be a solo guy, man. Not some little brother to fucking Sabretooth. Get out of here. No, man. You see, that's why, you know, that's why, you know, it just, it did not work. The way that the character of Wolverine is written, yeah, what they no. tried to do in the second Wolverine film, or the, I'm sorry, the first one, it did not work. They tried to force it. Yeah, they got Liev Schreiber. Yes, he's a good actor, but it just didn't work. When the characters don't work, yeah. the actors have nothing to work with. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, I love in the Deadpool movies how they just constantly shit on that movie, dude. <laughs> on both of them, dude. It's, 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 it's great. True. It's true, man. Oh, it's yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, God, they yeah. have him fighting in the Civil War, for God's sakes. Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, damn. I knew he had a backstory. All of them, right? Yeah. You know, now, the, he did fight in World War One. He fought in World War II as, as um, is it the Howlers, I believe. Um, he did fight with Captain yeah. America. Um, uh, in one of the storylines, he yeah, fought Captain right. America. Yep. So, yep. Um, you know, I, I'd like to see something like that um, uh, maybe put on the screen one day. Uh, that's definitely interesting. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, cool, man. Well, hey, let's uh, let's 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 do one more thing before we wrap this up, man. Uh, okay, this buddy. is going to be a staple of the show too. I'm oh. I'm going to try to end every show with uh, something that we started on the indie rundown on our main. Uh, on our main show, we haven't done it in a while, but uh, I'm going to start doing it for this show. 
Every week, we're going to end the show with a 10-question quiz oh, related no. to the topic. Oh, so no. Okay. I, hope you, I hope you brought your knowledge. I got a 10-question twi- quiz for you. It's, it's basically a quiz about everything Wolverine, okay. comics, and movies. All There's right. some easy ones in here, but I think there might be uh, some tough ones in here. So uh, right. are you ready? Let's give it a shot, man. We'll see what there, I There's do. no better way than just to dive right in, Let's man. Just jump you can't in, get brother. your feet wet. Just jump in. <laughs> All right. Let's jump in with this trivia, man. Okay. Question one. What is the first series Wolverine had his first appearance in the comics? Oh, man, Incredible Hulk. I can tell you it was Incredible Hulk uh, 180, and it was 181 Perfect. was the actual story, but 180, he was in the last panel. Perfect. Perfect. All right, maybe maybe you might slam all of these, dude. You're off to a good start. Yeah. All right, question two. Which Marvel superhero series has Wolverine never appeared in? Marvel superhero series has he never appeared? And I'm talking in. like the 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 big the big ones, like the big character stories. Doctor Doctor Strange. Nope, it's no. uh, Spider Man. What? No. Yep. But there, there's wait. Okay, but there's been crossovers. No, there's been crossovers, okay. but it okay. wasn't. Okay. Wait a second. What about what about uh, McFarlane's? I'm, talk, I'm talking about the main Spider-Man series. The main Spider-Man. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's probably crossovers in the Avengers stuff. And a little, little tricky question. But, okay. Um, All right. No, no, no. You, no. Know, I, you, gotta, you know, I should have known that, man. I should have known that. <laughs> yeah. I, did, I didn't know it, if it helps. I didn't know it. I was a little confused, too. Like, wait, they have been together before. Oh, that must have been through Avengers or something else or, you know. But, um, but yeah, let's move on to question three. That's in the Days of Future me. Past movie. Uh-huh. Yeah, in the, in the Days of Future Past movie, Wolverine goes back in time. Who does it in the comics? In the Days of Future Past, who does it in the comics? Oh, my God. I Wait, Days of Future Past, who does it in the comics? Yeah, who goes back in time in the comics? Because they, they only did Wolverine because of the movie. Is it Professor X? No, it's not. Who is it? It is Kitty Pride. It is Kitty Pride, isn't it? And I just talked to, I just mentioned Katie her. Pryde. Oh my God. Okay. Yep. This is good. Yep. This is good. All right. Well, I got an easy one for you. Question four. I think everybody and their dog should get this. Uh, <laughs> what metal lines Wolverine skeleton? Adamantium. Yeah, there you go. All right. Had to give you a softball. Had to give you softball. <laughs> uh, what real, what is Wolverine's daughter, X-23? What is her real name? I don't remember. Just looking for first name. You don't have to give the full name. Um, it's not. I, oh my God! I don't remember. It's not Maria, is it? It's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, what is come it? on, what man! Is it? It's Laura. It is Laura. God damn it! And she's speaking in Spanish. Yes. Yep. <laughs> oh come on, man! You're slipping, bro. You're I slipping, am, man. I am. Oh my God! All right, let's move, let, let, let's move on to question six. In the opening of the Wolverine movie. Which bomb does Wolverine take shelter from? Hiroshima or Nagasaki? It was Nagasaki, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It, it was, was Nagasaki. That's right. That's a 50-50 question right there. Yeah. All right, question seven. What is the name of the guild of ninjas that are always giving Wolverine trouble? Oh. Well, we know it's not the Yakuza. It's not the, uh, the Mafia. Um, is it the Silver Samurai? <laughs> It is not. Uh, it is the hand. The hand. Oh shit! That, that's a deep question right wow, there. Wow, man, you're digging in deep, bro. <laughs> no, that's good. Hey, you got to, man. Hey, you got to. You, you got to. You know, I'd prefer to to know what I forgot and what I can go back and read upon read on to. Yeah. See, you see, cool. now you can go back and look up on the hand stuff. That's it. You know. Give me some yeah, more. It could man. be a good refresher. Come on, let's do this. Let's move on to question eight. All right, got three more. Mm-hmm. Question eight. In the comics, not the movies, in the comics, Wolverine has taken two young girls under his wing and become a father figure. Who are they? You've got Kitty Pride. You've got That's one of them. Uh, you've got Rogue, I believe, was another one. Um, wait, what is Kitty Pride? There's uh, is it Rogue? There's uh, Rogue is not one Rogue of them, but I'll give you one more chance to get one more. Yeah. So Kitty to get the other Pride. one. Oh, Jubilee. There you go. Jubilee. Fucking a money, Man, dude. Man, dude. Because Bravo. Oh, by the way, another character extremely underutilized in the movies. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Terribly underutilized. Yeah. Yeah. Question nine. Who ripped the metal out of Wolverine? 
I know this. Um, who ripped it out of him? It. Yeah, this was an apocalypse. But apocalypse is what helped him, what helped heal him. Um, and they they ripped it out. It wasn't it wasn't Magneto either. Um, mm. Was it Magneto? No, it was Magneto. It was Magneto. Wow, it was Magneto. Okay, so it was Magneto ripped it out, and it was Apocalypse that that um, that helped. Him. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I should give you that wrong or right because I kind of helped you with that one. Mm. We'll, we'll get. Well, you 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 shouted his name, so we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. Okay. Yay! <laughs> you, you threw the name out there. Went for my ego. All, All right. right, last question. You got it. Yeah, last question, and I, I'll give you a little time to think about this because you might have to count. How many films in total did Hugh Jackman appear in as Wolverine? Okay, hold on. Including the X-Men movies. All of them. <laughs> Including cameos and lead roles. Doesn't matter. Mm. Hold on. This is ten. Just of the... Nine? There you go. Nine, nine, nine it is. Okay. Woo. Good job, my man. Good <laughs> job. All right, let's tally this shit up. <laughs> you got six right and three wrong. Oh. Not bad. You got a passing grade. Yes. There you go. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Good stuff, my man. That was fun. That was fun. Man. It's always fun to do trivia like this. Like I said, we haven't done it in a while on our main show, so I'm definitely going to start doing it every week on this show. Oh, so. it's good stuff, man. It's, yeah, man. Let me tell you, yeah, especially when it comes to Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Man, I can yeah. talk about this guy over and over again. But Oh, yeah. This, this show could have been three hours long, you know. But um, unfortunately, we got to wrap it up because reasons we got to keep a link there we don't want to be putting people to sleep but <laughs> although i'm sure there are hardcore fans that would love to hear a three-hour episode which kind of like how we want to see a three-hour movie of uh end game oh no doubt even four <laughs> you know you know they're actually saying that end game could be so long there the directors were thinking of putting an intermission in and everybody's like dude no we want to see the fucking movie fucking intermission well you know what no. wait 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 with th- those of us with kids wouldn't mind an intermission we don't want to miss that <laughs> We don't want to miss anything. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but the way I see it, man, we've been in intermission yeah. for an entire year right now. So uh, you got that right. Yeah, <laughs> bring it on, dude. Bring I'm it just on, gonna so. go see it first by myself, and then I'll go take the kids later on. <laughs> it, I think that's what you should do, man. That's, I think it. that's what you should do. So, but you got You got to savor every moment. Man. You cannot miss anything, dude. No. Nope. I went with a group of people to see Infinity War, and this girl claims she's a Marvel fan, but she's probably not really. She probably went up and got to the bathroom like four times throughout the movie, and it was all during important parts. And I'm like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? What the hell, Come man? Come on. You don't do that. And she's like, what I miss? what I miss? <laughs> everything. <laughs> she missed everything, dude. Damn. So, yeah. I try to avoid going to the bathroom in movies like that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So. But anyways, man, I think that's going to do it uh, on this uh, pilot episode, the first edition of Thank Comic you, man. Book Weekly. So, uh, God, dude, hey, you. seriously, I really appreciate you uh, chopping it up with me, man. This has been great. Brother, I appreciate um, you doing this. I appreciate you creating the show, man. You know, Of um, course, man. You, one tends to uh, feel a little uh, bit like an outsider whenever they have um, a subject like uh, Wolverine or uh, just the whole, any comic book, you know, um, topic and you just look around like, oh God, who am I going to talk to that doesn't think I'm a weirdo, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 right, right. That's it. Right? That's, that's that's a good point, man. But no, I mean, it's cool because, you know, we're going to do, like I said, a rotating guest thing. So you'll definitely be back on Great. multiple times down the road, man. We'll always have you. So uh, it's the first of many, man. And uh, I hope it's a, uh, I hope it's a show that can grow, you know, get fans and eyes on it, you know, and then anybody can come join. I don't care. If you love comics, you love superhero shit, come hang out with us, man. And it won't always just be me, man. Like me and you could host a show one day. Oh, yeah. We can have another guest on. I mean, we can do, there's so much stuff to play with in this. There's no like right or wrong way to do it, man. No, so it's a big it's, universe. It's, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. And that too, there's so much to cherry pick from, dude. I'm probably never going to run out of show ideas. So, uh, yeah, man. It's a pilot episode, man. I think we I think we did good for the first one. We'll find our footing. We'll find our groundwork. That's how shows work. You grow into them. But, yeah, this was fun, man. And it I was, appreciate man. you being on, bro. Oh, man. Had a blast, dude. Thank you so very much. And I got to say it again. You're the perfect host for this, man. Perfect host. Appreciate it, man. I really do. And you really got to come be on the main show with me and Mike again, dude, because we got to talk more more stuff about film and all that because we didn't get too much time with you last time. So, And, plus, that was a while back. You were, I think you were like the fourth or fifth episode and we're on like 59 60 right now so it's it's Sweet. been a while we need to catch up with you so i'm ready <laughs> hopefully we'll do that in the near future man <laughs> you got it brother i'm ready yeah all right brother man well hey i appreciate you joining me man and uh once again follow us everywhere at the indie rundown all over social media 
it's one word, man. We're consistent, just like Marvel. You know, we yeah. I, indie rundown everywhere. So search for us, follow the channel, subscribe, man. Let us know your thoughts on Wolverine, all that good stuff. I'm Zach. We'll see you next time.